Hello! Today I want to talk about ammunition storage in tanks. This is part 1 of a longer series. Let's start with Leopard 2 series of main battle tanks. Leopard 2s have two main gun ammo racks. First one is placed in turret, it holds 15 rounds and can be considered a safe ammunition magazine. It is isolated from crew by around 40mm thick armored bulkheads and armored sliding blast doors. This magazine is also equipped with a single blow-off panel. Second ammo rack is however dangerous. It is placed in hull next to the driver and stores 27 rounds. It's not isolated but exposed to the crew compartment. Of course, the metal tubes that hold rounds might protect them of, uh, to some degree against spall, but any direct hit or fire reaching the ammo will initiate ammunition cook-off event that will be catastrophic to the tank and its crew. So here you can see how the ammunition rack in the hull looks like from the crew perspective inside the tank. The only upgrade for the Leopard 2 series hull ammunition rack was to reduce the amount of ammunition stored in it, thus creating an air gap between ammo rack and the hull belly. This was made for increased protection against underbelly blasts from IDs and anti-tank mines. So you can see here uh, that the ammunition amount in the whole rack was reduced and we can see that there is an air gap created between the whole belly and the ammo rack itself. Here we can also see turret ammo rack with its blast doors opened. However, this ammo rack might not be 100% safe. Here is a photo of Turkish Leopard 2A4 hit into the turret bustle ammo storage. As we can see, blow off panel was, well, blown off and ammo rack burned. However, the bulkhead isolating ammo rack from the turret electronics compartment seems to not be made from steel, but rather thin aluminium that melted due to heat generated by burning ammo. Fire most likely spread then to the electronics compartment and from electronics compartment into the crew compartment. As we can see some suspicious burn marks around not only the turret hatches but also the driver hatch. However this most likely took some time and crew was able to ex escape. Here we can see two more Turkish Army Leopard 2A4s. This time they seem to suffer from flying turret syndrome, mostly attributed to Soviet, Russian and Ukrainian tanks. However, majority of tanks used all over the world will face this problem due to similar ammunition storage to the Leopard 2. Official claims were that these tanks were damaged and later abandoned by crews and later destroyed by Turkish air forces. But I have some doubts about this version. There are no bomb craters near the tanks. Okay, Turkish air forces could use some ATGMs, but then again, so could the insurgents operating in the area. Whatever is the reason of this tank's destruction, the reality is that Leopard 2's Hull ammo rack is dangerous, both for vehicles and its crew survivability. As we can see, one of the tanks had its entire hull front disintegrated due to ammunition explosion. And here is another example. This is also Turkish Leopard 2A4 that was hit by ATGM. It can be seen on video. Uh, 
I will post a link to that video in the description of my video. The tank was directly hit into the whole Amorak. It caused catastrophic destruction of the vehicle and the death of its crew if they were inside. Hull was definitely disintegrated and the only more or less intact part of the hull is the engine compartment. As we can see here, um, the ta what is left from the tank is simply a scrap heap. So, as you can see, the Leopard 2 series are not very safe tanks and even the newest Leopard 2 A7V will share the same fate as these Turkish Leopard 2 A4s. In case of armor penetration and the whole ammo cook of event, as even Leopard 2 A7V still uses the same non-protected ammo rack next to the driver. Let's move to the second vehicle, the M1 Abrams series, were designed with different philosophy than Leopard 2. One of the primary requirements for Abrams was crew survivability and protection. This is why in case of M1 and M1 IP variants armed with 105mm gun, 44 rounds were stored in turret bustle. 8 rounds were stored in compartment between turret and engine and 3 rounds were stored in armored box placed on the turret basket floor. If crew wanted to increase their survivability, they could simply not take these uh, 3 additional rounds or fire them first. M1A1 and M1A2 series are even safer, as entire ammunition is stored in isolated ammo racks in turret bustle and in the hull. Now the turret bustle holds 34 rounds in case of first generation ammo racks, or 36 rounds if second, third or fourth generation ammo racks are used. Amorax are isolated from crew compartment by uh, 40 mm thick armored sliding blast doors. Here we can see turret ammo storage. As we can see, turret bustle is separated into two ammo magazines by another armored bulkhead. As in case if only one ammo rack is hit, the tank will not lose its entire ammo storage. So here we can see the opened uh, semi-ready rack compartment. Here we can see the side uh, armored bulkhead separating one uh, turret bustle magazine from the another. Here we can also see a 4th generation ammo rack. These are interesting as they are bolted to the blow of panels. This solution have two purposes. First purpose is uh, to allow for quick ammunition replenishment in the field. If there is crane available, blow of panels can be simply bolted off taken out with ammo racks by the crane and put on the ground, so troops can quickly replace uh, the ammunition in them and then via the crane ammo racks are placed again inside turret bustle and blow off panels are bolted on. Second purpose is that in case of ammunition cook-off event, when blow off panel is blown off by the pressure of the burning ammunition, in some cases, it can take out of the tank burning ammo rack, thus minimizing damage to the turret bustle. You will see that in the moment. <clears throat> Let's move to the hull ammo storage. As we can see on these photos, hull ammo rack is also isolated by armored sliding blast doors.
In M1A1 and M1A2 tanks armed with 120mm gun, these hull racks hold uh, 6 rounds in total, 3 rounds per each magazine. In M1 and M1IP armed with 105mm gun, these magazines stored 8 rounds in total, 4 rounds per each magazine. Blow-off panels for hull ammo rack are, are placed both in hull roof and hull belly. Here you can see a hull roof blow-off panel. And here is the drawing. There are also two blow-off panels in the belly. Here is a drawing which explains how blow-off panels works. So ammo storage is hit, ammunition starts to cook off, blow-off panel is blown off, releasing dangerous pressure, flames and gas from the burning ammunition. And here we can see a Saudi Arabian M1A2S tank. We can see how fourth generation ammo rack is being taken out of the magazine space by the blow of panel, thus proving that this design solution really works. And here is another photo showing US M1A1. As we can see, ready ammo rack was hit, but armored sliding blast doors protected the crew and the tank itself from ammunition fire. And the blow of panel worked as designed. We also have here proof that second uh, ammunition rack in the turret was not affected, as its blow-off panel is still visible mounted in place. The fact is that the M1 Abrams tanks are currently safest mass-produced tanks in the world, thanks to extremely simple in design, but also extremely effective solution to the problem of the ammunition storage safety. In future, all tanks, hopefully, will share this solution in one form of the, or the another. In future episodes, I will show you other MBTs and their ammunition storage and consequences of the design choices made by each nation, armies and engineers. So, we'll see in future videos. We'll catch you later.